other. Thank you, Janet. And I do want to say I'm very thankful for the opportunity to teach. So uh, <clears throat> I think it's important to give a brief explanation that I am not a biblical scholar. I, I work a job. I, you know, I spend time in the Bible. In fact, I have for more than 40 years. But I see myself more as a reteacher, more of an aggregator of truth. I've been studying this book since God knows when. Before I ever left the way, I had this book in my hot little hands, and I was reading this one. And the first person I reached out to when I left was John Shane Uh I've managed to go through his Revelation seminar three or four times. Uh, here's another one, Nick Catania on the kingdom of God. If you guys know Nick, uh, death and resurrection to life. These are these are these are the truths that I'm attempting to bring together. All right. Uh, here's Jan Majera and the coming of the Son of Man. And this is my favorite. I've had this for many years. Tim LaHaye, The Times, charting the end times. Get a lot of good good uh, charts out of that one. So. I'm very pleased to be teaching this at this time. It's, it's very much um, the subject of the hour. Uh, we've been teaching Thessalonians. Uh, John and Sue have been teaching on great things on uh, rewards in the kingdom. And um, I don't have all the titles. I know Jim, uh, Tim uh, just taught on the uh, millennial kingdom. And other ministries also have been teaching on Thessalonians and on the hope. John Nessel right now is teaching on the hope. So uh, we're going to, I'm going to need to start to share my screen here. So I'm going to do that right now. And if I can find the right one. Um, give it a minute. There it is. Okay. So you you're surely welcome to uh, pick up your Bible. I got to make something get smaller. I can't read my own writing here. There we go. Um, I'm not using the Rev a lot, and and I got reasons for that. But I do I do quote John Shane Height, and you'll see I just did a lot of King James, a lot of NIV. So a lot of the stuff's going to be on the screen to just avoid having to jump back and forth between versions. So um basically we're beginning right now so are you tired of evil men having their way in this life are you tired of righteous folks seeming to get the short end of the stick are you discouraged that christians often end up the butt of the joke of the world's jokes and the objects of the world's derision are you ready for this present evil age to end and the next age to begin, then you're ready for the times of restitution of all things. Now, there's a couple of different ways of translating this phrase, and you'll see it in different versions. And I'm I'm kind of partial to this one, but I also like, uh, you know what? Now my uh, there it is. I have to hit the uh, I the touchpad to make it change. The times of restoration of all things is also translated that, and I like that both both ways work: restitution or restoration, because they uh, restitution has the idea of of judgment, I think, in it. So I like that one. So I use that a lot. But restoration also has the flavor of what we're looking for. So go to Acts chapter three, please. In your Bibles, sure, if you want to go to your Bibles. Um, Immediately after the healing of the lame man in Acts chapter 3, in the first recorded miracle after the day of Pentecost, not sure how long after Pentecost, but Acts chapter 3, we see these words from the Apostle Peter spoken to the assembled Judeans gathered on Solomon's porch. And I swear I never saw these words, even though I've read the Bible a lot. <laughs> I never saw these words for just till just the last few years here. But listen, verse 19, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. 
And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Lots of books on the hope, lots of books on uh, the end times, lots of books on the end of the world. Not too many on the times of restitution of all things, yet that's what God's referring to it as here. Acts uh, 319, this is in the NASB, which is the New American Standard Bible. Therefore, repent and return so that your sins may be wiped away in order that, that's how you could translate that, in order that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. So I believe we are in this times of refreshing now. You might not always feel that way, but this administration, this grace period that we're in now is certainly compared to the ages that have passed us, <laughs> certainly are refreshing, certainly a, a, a cool breeze, how that could be pronounced or it could be translated, anasuxis, a cooling, refreshing breeze. So it may not feel like that today, but we are definitely in that period right now. When we are, when we repent and be converted, it is so that times of refreshing may come. But in verse 21, it continues. It uh, speaks of a time or times when order is restored to the world and things are put back right, a restitution. The word times is plural here, okay? Times, a restitution of all things. That's plural, that time. So I like uh, some people, in fact, John Shanehite translates it singular as time, but most versions use it as plurals of times or periods it's chronon in the Greek, chronon. It's a plural of chronos. And, it, and it's often translated in the plural form as seasons or periods of time. So um, I like this, this translation. The, this is the ASV, the American Standard Version. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things. Here, I need to move this thing again so I can see. Ah, okay, I'll be all right. Where of God by the mouth of all his, all his holy prophets that have been of old. So the, the web version, let's see, that's the uh, World English Bible written in 1901, translated times of restitution of all things. The NASB, New American Standard Bible, 1971, says the period of restoration of all things. That's why I am favoring the translation of it being plural, like it's seasons of restoration. Because as you'll see, there's a lot of happenings that could be ref referred to here, and they happen over a long period of time. A lot of things going on here. So this is how it's translated in the plural. Acts 170 said to them, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons, kairos. So times, plural, is chronos, and seasons, kairos, with the Father has put in his own power. Also 1 Thessalonians 5, 1. But of the times, chronos, or the seasons, kairos, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. So it's, it's used often in the plural. That's why, again, I like the plural version of it. Back to Acts chapter 3. So I believe this time period of seasons of restorations seasons of restorations if you like that it overlaps what we have called administrations or what we call dispensations and logically i believe it starts with the gathering together of the church we'll call it the rapture peter did not know about this at this time yet god did so in my thinking why couldn't god inspire him by way of holy spirit to talk about sending forth Jesus Christ, right? For the times of restitution of all things. So um, that word restitution is a great one. Apocatastasis. It's only used once. There's no other verses to go to, but here's how Thayer translates it. It is the restoration of the perfect state before the fall. 
And in my um, written version that I've been posting in our prayer group, I spent a lot of time why we have to be restored, but I only have four sessions that might feel like a lot, but it doesn't feel like a lot to me and I'm, I'm having to condense. So we're going to skip why we need to be restored. I'm going to take it for granted. You knew that man fell. Okay. So we need to be restored. The entire earth needs to be restored back to its original state. And that's what the word restitution could be um, viewed as the bringing it back to its original state. Now, this word is from the word, um, and let me say it right here, apokathostemi, apokathostemi. All right, now this is used twice here in these two great verses. You'll recognize them, starting in Matthew 12. And when he, Jesus, was departed thence, he went into the synagogue, and, he, and behold, there was a man which had his hand withered and they asked him saying is it lawful to heal on the sabbath day that they might accuse him and he said to the man stretch forth thine hand and the man stretched it out and it was restored apocathem that word whole it was restored whole like the other we don't know if that man's hand was ever whole we don't know if he was born with a withered hand it really doesn't say Yet it was restored the way God intended it. Our restoration will not be to the way the earth was 12 years ago. It's going to come back to the way God intended it. Next use here. This is uh, Mark 8, 22, King James. And he, Jesus, cameth to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. Verse 25. After that, he, Jesus, put his hands upon his man's eyes and made him look up, and he was restored and saw every man clearly. Again, this man may have been blind from birth. We don't know. We don't know how long. We don't know how bad his condition was, but he was restored to the way God intended eyes to be. He was brought back to complete wholeness, and he saw every man clearly. So back to Acts chapter 3. Now, verse 20, and he, God, shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Times here is plural. Restitution is singular. So what's up with that? Well, each personal restoration might be an instantaneous event like with the rapture yet this is happening over a long period of time there are multiple restorations that are going to happen i'm going to by the grace of god cover many of them not all of them see our personal restoration will be a one-time event but the restoration of all things involves many restoration events over a period of time I'll give you the examples here 1 Corinthians 15 in the King James, for as in Adam, or as in Adam, all die, even so in Christ shall we all be made alive. Is that all at the same time? That's a rhetorical question. No. <laughs> Every man in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, that was instantaneous, his resurrection. Afterwards, they that Christ said it's coming. Well, when was that? Didn't happen yet. There's nearly 2,000 years between the two of these. See? There's a period of time here in that, that restoration here. For the times, let's see, let's keep moving. Then cometh the end, when we all have delivered the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall put down all rule and all authority and power. When is that? That's at least another thousand years past when our rapture is thousand plus seven plus who knows how long, right? So this period, these seasons of restoration, you see how it's 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 everything gets restored in God's timetable over this period of time. So it's not a one-time event. 
So here, he must, Jesus must reign till he's put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. We're talking a very long period of time, just covered in these six verses here, five verses, four verses. So this is the times of restitution all of all things here in a nutshell, in my mind. Now, the end times. That's, an, that's a word people use a lot, all right? The end in this case is, is likely the end of the millennial kingdom. And then, of course, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. All right, again, that's after the second resurrections when people get thrown in the lake of fire, then death and hell get thrown in the lake of fire at that point. It's Revelation chapter 20, 13, and 14. Some scholars refer to the end times or eschatology. That's the study of the end times. And that's a legitimate study. Is that what we're talking about? Is that the times of restitution of all things? Do they, do they correspond? Perhaps. But a simple search in my Blue Letter Bible, that's my search tool. In the seven versions that I have downloaded, there are no uses of those two phrases together, end times. Never used. Now, maybe some versions they, they are, but not in the ones I have. So, so this end times could fit into the restoration of all things, but that's the words God's using, right? Restoration of all things. So I want to show you some charts here. These are end time charts, and they attempt to put everything into a linear fashion, which is great, and I like that. And we, we, we think logically and linearly, usually. So to show you, you know, when each event has a lot of people put them in rest or, um, in linear fashion, excuse me, it's not vodka. But check out these charts. <coughs> excuse me. They don't always agree. And men and women, great men and women are going to disagree on the exact timing of this. And so I'm not going to, here's another one. People have been fighting about the end times for a long time. And I, I don't want to get like pigeonholed or to, or to cross anyone out as to where they believe these events happen. Okay. There's lots of great charts, as you can see, and you can just Google the images. And there's a lot going on. And there's no way we're going to cover every one of these subjects, nor could we tell you when each and every one of them happened. We won't know till they happen. Many things. We won't know till it's coming to pass. So I'm gonna to attempt to put these into categories. I think that that's a better way for me to handle it. Um, some of these have several aspects in each category and they're more a summary of overlapping events, often overlapping events. So um, <clears throat> now I think that because of this verse here, he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, that logically the times of restoration begin with the return. We could argue on this about, is this the first coming of the rapture, or is it the second coming with the saints? We could argue, and I don't have the answer, but I think our personal restoration starts here. So that's where I begin the times of restoration is with the rapture. All right. Secondly, you want to call it the return. You want to say it's the gathering together. That's great. But it's the same event. After that, we're going to talk about resurrections. There's at least two. There's a resurrection of the just and the unjust. And many actually believe that the resurrection of the two witnesses should be counted in there. And then there's 144,000. Where do we put those in? Not going to solve that question here. <laughs> judgments, many, many judgments, including the day of the Lord is a day of judgment. And that's not just one day. That's a very long period of time. There's the battles of Armageddon, which count as part of the judgments. There's the judgments of the nation, which are the sheep and goat judgment. There's the final battle at the end of the millennial kingdom. And certainly we could list the great white throne judgment in the judgments. So 
That's a big category. But that's part of the restitution of all things. Even kids know when things aren't fair, you want to see things put right, don't you? The rewards. We got to we got to recognize there's rewards at the Bema, at the judgment seat of Christ, but there's lots more categories of rewards to follow after that. It was handled really well in Tim Shulton when he's teaching on the millennial kingdom. A lot of this great stuff that's rewards of the future. Then <clears throat> the kingdom, you want to call it kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, uh, millennial kingdom, final paradise. I'm just going to say the kingdom or kingdoms, and we're not going to argue on that one here. But different people have differing appearance of exactly what is what. What's the kingdom of God? What's the kingdom of heaven? A lot of times Jesus Christ just refers to the kingdom. So we're going to pretty much just call it the kingdom. And then finally, the ages to come the glories that will follow, uh, the um, Ephesians 2, 7 calls it the ages to come or the coming ages. And also it's referred to as the administration of the fullness of time. So these are just the categories I'm placing them in. I'm going to attempt to get uh, these categories covered. Now, is this what Jesus Christ called is the times of restitution equal to the end of the world that Jesus Christ talked about in the Gospels. Let's look at that right now. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it shall be at the end of the world. So the best translation for world would probably be ages. In fact, uh, the NIV does translate it, the end of the age. Verse 41, the Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall um, gather them and gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them that do iniquity, and they shall cast them in the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the, sign, the Son in the kingdom of his Father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Very definitely, this fits into the times of restitution, but it's not necessarily covering everything. There's nothing about the rapture there. It was unknown to Jesus at that time. It was, it was a mystery, part of the mystery. And then it doesn't necessarily speak of the, the continuing kingdom after that, but it fits within that framework, somewhere within that framework. Uh, other uses of it. Uh, Matthew 24 and he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the age? Again, we'll translate it that way. Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you for he, for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many and many sh shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilence, earthquakes, divers places. All these are just the beginning of sorrow. Again, end of the world in, in that framework of times of restitution, but we're out here. <laughs> it's just a piece of the puzzle, a piece of it. How about the word hope? Is the hope a one-time event? I used to think that. I, I didn't I didn't like that answer. I used to think the hope and the return. And what happened after that was pretty blank. There was really no great understanding nor teaching, I should add, about what happened after the hope. Yeah, we'd get some rewards and then we would. I don't know. I did not know. So is it a one time event? Let's see. Ye men of Nat this is Acts chapter 2. We're going to go back to the verse, very first sermon, Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. You have taken him by wicked hands, have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up 
having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible to hold them. But for David speak concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. He is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope because thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. So this is a, a quote from Psalm 16. We'll look at it here in a minute. That first part of that took place 2,000 years ago. And then when was David raised? Not yet. So there's at least 2,000 years between those two parts of the verse. See, the hope that David rested in is a period of time. That's my point here. Uh, Psalm 16 says that again. This is the prophecy spoken by Peter. There's um, at least 2,000 years between, because we don't know we don't know when the first resurrection is going to happen yet. And then the last verse, thou wilt, thou wilt show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. See how that continues on. We're talking beginning at the resurrection of Jesus Christ continuing forevermore. This is a time period. This is a, um, a seasons of restoration. So Christ's hope was instantaneous, but that's the first fruits. The rest of this is taking time, periods of time. God will bring it to pass in good time, we'll say. Now, our personal restoration here, what about our hope? Is it a one-time event? Let's look at 1 Corinthians. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. That moment, that's an atom that's instantaneous. That is faster than you can blink an eye. We shall be changed. This mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on corruption, this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that death is swallowed up in victory. Now, that's true for us, but death is not swallowed up in victory for everyone at that point. There's a whole lot of that going on after our return. That's... Uh, It's a quote of, from Hosea 13, 14, in fact. We'll look at that. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? That's from Hosea 13, 14. I will deliver this people from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. Where, O death, I have to move this window pane because I can't read my own scriptures. I don't know how to do that. This is beyond me. <laughs> oh, grave, where, oh, grave, is your destruction? I will have no compassion. So that's the quote. And that's a quote spoken of Israel, not of the church. Yet it's utilized for our restoration. See, there's more to come. Oh, death, where are there plagues? Oh, grave, where is your destruction? First Thessalonians, for the Lord himself, verse 4, 16 through 18, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Pay attention to that. Wherever the Lord is, we will be. Wherefore? Comfort one another with these words. See, our rapture is a one-time occurrence, but, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's a continuing state. That's a continuing reward, as we will see. And the more we understand about it, the more it's a comfort. The more we understand about it, the more we can be committed. Understanding not just the one-time event of our hope, but our continuing times of restitution of all things. Now, back to Acts chapter 3. 
This is this is a part should have grabbed my attention too long ago. All right. This times of restitution of all things which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. All his holy prophets, and that, that's probably figure of speech since the world began. But every Old Testament prophet has spoken of the times of restitution of all things. And I missed it. I wasn't looking for it, but I missed it. And look at this, Acts 3, 24, a couple of verses later. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. It's pretty clear in retrospect that these truths should have been known. Uh, Peter was speaking to Judeans at this point. There was a big crowd of Judeans, about 5,000 at least got saved that day. So we're talking in the temple on Solomon's porch, big crowd of Judeans. And he's saying to them, you should have seen this stuff. Well, I should have seen it too. I'm looking for it now. <laughs> I'm looking for it every time I read the Old Testament. I'm looking for promises of restoration when I read the Old Testament now. So all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after have spoken of these and foretold of these days. So we're going to look today just a couple in the three weeks to follow. We're going to look at more Old Testament scriptures that foretell of times of restitution. And we don't see all the details, but they fit together when we begin to understand the things that we know of Jesus Christ and his return and the millennial kingdom to come. So just look at Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Sounds good, right? The ungodly are not so, but they are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. Whoa, where'd this come from? Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Where's that? For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Well, let me ask you, again, it's rhetorical. Have the ungodly perished? Look around you. <laughs> this is speaking of the judgments of the future still, and there it is, Psalm 1. My favorite Psalm, perhaps, is Psalm 37. It's chock full of promises. It is chock full. We'll just spend time looking right now. Now for me to read this, I have to collapse my little window and I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> I'm on a laptop, so the screen's small. All right, I'll see if I can remember it all. Uh, Psalm of David, fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity for they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as the green herb. I know what I can do. I can escape there. Now I can read it all. So wither as a green herb, trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Look at that promise there. They, the workers of iniquity shall soon be cut down like grass. Did it happen? Has it happened? <laughs> Wither as the green herb, trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land. Ooh, nice promise. And verily thou shalt be fed. Verse 9, for evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Well, heck, that's already happened. Look at that. No, not. <laughs> for yet a little while and the wicked shall not be. These are future promises tucked right there in Psalm 37. 
Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be, but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth his day is coming. What day? Day of judgment. The wicked have drawn out their sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy to slay such a be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bow shall be broken. Again, promises of restoration here, promises of justice, promises of judgment. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the ways of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time and in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke, shall they consume away. That's gonna be session three, by the way, will be judgments. Session two, I think rewards, session three judgments, and then session four will be glories to come. So. Verse 17, for the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time and in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish and in the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke. Into smoke shall they consume away. These are, this is just one Psalm. They are preserved forever. The saints are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The wicked are cut off. We'll see it. Wait till you get to one of my favorite verses where we wash our feet in the blood of the wicked. That's hard to believe but it's one of the promises that God has given us. I've seen the wicked in great power spreading himself like a green bay tree, yet he passed away and lo, he was not. Yet I saw him and he could not be found. And finally, the transgressor shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. Verse 40, and the Lord shall help him, the righteous, and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. God has been promising restitution by all of the prophets since the world began. We just need to look for it and see it, and it's part of our hope. If we understand First of all, what God's doing for us. And secondly, what God does to our enemies. We understand the restitution of all things better. Back to Acts chapter 3. So, <clears throat> restitution, restoration, whichever way you want to want to talk about it. I'll spend the next few chapters exploring just a portion of the Old Testament scriptures to point out what God has promised since the world began. My source will be mostly the Bible and versions of the Bible. And I, I will quote some of these books I've been talking about along the way. Together, we'll see glimpses. Don't have time to show you all. <laughs> glimpses of the times of restitution. So next week, the rewards. So thank you.